Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the time that we have each morning to study together. And as we look at Esther chapter 3 in more detail, we invite your spirit's presence to help us to see things clearly, to understand what it is you're presenting to us. Um, help us in our conversations, in our thoughts, help us to have attentive minds and open hearts. May your spirit speak to us and be here now. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, well, good morning again. And... So, in study here that we've been doing, um, you know, Heidi was watching it, and she says, are you going to bring all this stuff together so that it makes sense? Because um, there's a lot of things that, that is, there's a lot of balls in the air, um, and we have to try to, to keep everything in focus. And and so just to kind of go through a little bit of a review of what we're doing here. So the first thing is, obviously, obviously we're looking at Daniel's last vision, chapter 10 through 12. And the thing that we see is um, that we have this history of the kings of Persia. And the kings of Persia uh, represent uh, our history. Now, the way that we have lined them up is that um, we can take uh, this history from 539 BC and, and line it up with 1989. Now we have, um, along with this, just hang on a second, I'm gonna do something with the sound. Okay, is there background noise? Do you hear background noise? It's just I have the furnace on, believe it or not. So I had to put a filter on just so you don't hear that. Anyway, so <clears throat> we know that we got 539 BC and 1989 AD lined up together. And that is the, the message of the three decrees parallels the message of the three angels' messages in Millerite history and the repeat of those messages in our history. And so Jeff, back in the end of 2015, um, uh, came to understand through um, um, through because we were doing this study on the seven uh, thunders, and we were looking at the the last seven kings of Judah, and then we started looking at the uh, first seven kings of Persia, and so we had lined these up, and as these came together, we started to recognize that we could line up the presidents of the United States with these kings of Persia. And so in Daniel chapter 11, um, we have <clears throat> here, Daniel chapter 11, we have these kings of Persia laid out um, uh, where it says, we know that Darius is, is is in 539, and then you have uh, Cyrus, who's going to be the king at this time, because according to chapter 10, this is in the third year of Cyrus, which sometimes is called the first year of Cyrus, so it's the third year from the fall of Babylon. And then uh, there's going to be three kings that stand up yet in Persia, and then there's going to be a fourth. And so we can line up uh, Dries the Mede with Ronald Reagan, can line up Cyrus with Bush the first. We line up um, <clears throat> uh, Cambyses with Clinton. We line up a uh, false Murtis um, with Bush the second, and then we line up Darius the Persian, who's the third one. We line him up with Obama, and then following Obama, we have Trump. He's going to be the fourth. 
That's Xerxes. So we have Trump and Xerxes together. Now, so that's what we're examining right now is we're examining Daniel 11, verse 2. But in doing that, we have, according to the scripture of truth, uh, even though the book of Esther is later, we just take the Bible as a unit. So the scripture of truth, what's shown in the scripture of truth, that's Daniel 10, verse 21. And it says, now I will show thee the truth in Daniel 11, verse 2. So you can see that's a continuation of that chapter. That is, it's not like, <laughs> I mean, they're related. So I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, right? Then it says, I was also in the first year of Dries the Meat, even I stood to confirm and strengthen him. So it's going to bring us back to Dries the Meat. So it wants us to look at Dries the Meat as part of this line, right? And But we know we're in the time of Cyrus, because it's told us that in chapter 10, uh, verse 1. And then it says, now I'll show thee the truth. So this is according to the scripture of truth. So this is what's in the scriptures. We can see in Ezra chapter 4, we're going to see these kings. They're laid out. And, and so we looked at that as well. Uh, but now we're looking at another place in scripture where we can understand these kings, particularly Xerxes, right? So that's why we're in the book of Esther. So in the book of Esther, we have determined uh, that Daniel 1, 2, and 3 represent the first, second, and third angel's messages, and those are parallel with um, Esther 1, 2, and 3, right? So chapters 1, 2, and 3 in the book of Esther are the first, second, and third angel's messages. We examine the first message so we could see how um, that first message is the first angel's message, how it lines up with Daniel. But what we noticed more particularly is that Esther chapter 1 addresses our history. And now one of the things about it that I don't know if we discussed, but uh, the first day of the first month, um, so obviously 1-1 one, one represents the first day of the first month. And in our history, uh, we have 9-11 representing the first day of the first month. So, um, so if we're saying that this is the first angel's message in our history, we're actually a bit more zoomed in than going from 1989 and so forth. When we look at Esther itself, Esther is a history that occurs within the second angel's message. And we know the second angel's message goes from the first day of the first month in 1844 to the tenth day of the seventh month in 1844, right? So is this review helping people a little bit focus on what we're talking about? I think you're providing the framework. Okay, so so that's the framework in which which we've we've operated. So now when I say that this is the first day of the first month, we know it's it represents 9-11. That is, it represents the history of the second angel's message. But we could even uh, bring this into, to say that we're zooming in further, that this is really about 11 9, 19. That is, November 9th, 2019. That this history specifically is addressing the history of this movement connected with that 777 day period. Right? Does that, does that make sense to people? I mean, we, we, we dealt with it a bit, but um, whether that's really established in people's minds or not, that I'm not sure. But we have Esther 1 1, so that's going to remind us of 9 11. But it also we can apply the first day of the first month to November 9th, 2019. And in our study of the judges, we've shown how 9-11 and 11-9 are really the same way mark. That is when we zoom into 9-11 as the arrival of the second angel's message, we're really looking at 11-9, right? Once we zoom in, we, we get that way mark. So, 
whether this is fully established in everyone's mind we, or of whether any of us really understand the significance of what this means completely, I don't know. But that is what God has shown us in our studies. And the thing that we have here in Esther chapter one is the 187 days. So we would have to connect that to July 18th. Now we know also um, that uh, Dwight had given us some images to look at. I don't know where they are now. I have to find them again. Uh, at the end of the study yesterday. Well, that's why they're there. <clears throat> and uh, so these diagrams that he has. Uh, so the first one here is is the first one. Um, that's uh, Esther notes A. And this diagram here is addressing, I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, this idea of the 187 days, the feast, and the four years, and that brings us to the seventh year, the tenth month. So we have this 187 days, and then we have these four years. Now, now four years on a Gregorian calendar is 1,461 days. Um, so that would be... Um, uh, you know, solar years, right? So Gregorian, that's the, the cycle, same on the Julian, every four years, because you have a leap year. So it's 365 times two is 730. 730 times two is 1460. And then you have that one extra day for the leap year. But this four years is a little bit more. It is, we're gonna have a period of 1565 days, and then another period of 1527 days. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, in in these two different uh, periods of four years that we are talking about. But anyway, so if we look at this here, we know that this 187 days leads to the 10th day of the seventh month, right? So that's that's from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. And then we have these periods of four years that lead us to a symbol that is similar to the 10th day of the seventh month. That's the seventh year of the 10th month. And uh, we're going to have this covenant that's made. So um, in the next diagram uh, that Dwight sent, he's going to make this suggestion that we can look at our history and we can look at July 18th and we can line up the 187 days as pointing to July 18, 2020. And then the four years from July 18th, uh, 2020, and he's going to bring us to August 15th, 2024. And so that was a period of um, 1,527 days, I believe. Now, now, the reason you chose August 15th for those four years, what would lead you to that, Dwight, to that conclusion? As we were addressing yesterday, August 15th of 2024 is the 490th anniversary on the Google, on the Julian calendar, excuse me, of yeah. the founding of the Jesuit order. Okay. But what does the Jesuit order have to do? Like, I mean, we can say there's four years, but to pick August 15th out of all these different possible dates, um, why why would that be connected to this study? Okay, on the line above, on the the tenth month of the seventh year, mm -hmm. we have Esther entering into a covenant mm -hmm. with the king. Mm -hmm. Now. This covenant is also a type of a league. Mm -hmm. So when when I had been studying this and considering it, August 15th of 
is the number that we find on the 1843 chart, 158, of the Jews entering into a league with Rome. Okay, so I understand those things, but I'm saying why would this then be connected to this story? Because uh, I don't understand the connection to the story. I mean, I'm saying August 15th, 2024 might be a significant date. It might be connected to some kind of structure. But why to this story? All I'm, all I'm trying to do is look at the symbols. I know, but I don't, I don't see the symbols okay. in this for that. That's all I'm saying. So, um, because you know, it's obviously significant. We got um, it's going to be 120 years from August 15th, 1844, and it's going to be 490 years. So we can say we have these two symbols um, converging on August 15th, 2024. But here we have four years, and you know, so I mean, we could could look at it some other way. Right. I mean, I'm just saying that it's um, it just I, I don't know what the connection would be. There might be a connection. But I'm not sure uh, bringing the Jesuits into our history here at this point, what that would particularly mean. Right. Because we're, we're on a very zoomed in history here. Right. This, right. This is, very specific type of history that we're addressing, which is an internal history within this movement. Um, no, I'm just gonna... um, let me see here. I'm just doing some stuff with the calendar converter. Sure. And... So the number of days that we have from July 18, 2020, um, like if we were to count the same number of days that we had in that story of Esther, 1500, I think it was 1565. I'm, I'm going to have to check that again. Because um, you understand what I'm saying. I, I would just take the story of Esther to find a date in our history, and I would count from that date. So the date that we had um, was in 483 B.C. on the 10th day of the 10th month. Right. So that's going to be um, October 18th, 483. So that's when they're going to have that um that uh, Vashai, right at the end of the seven days of feast, it's going to be um, the 10th day. Well, no, it's October 17th, pardon me. Okay, so you get this here. So. Okay, so it's, um, it's going to be the ninth day of the seventh month on the Babylonian calendar. But since it's 187 days from the first day of the first month, we would count October 17th, 483, and then... Um, okay, so that one was 1527. Okay. So that's going to bring us to the first day of the 10th month in 479. So 1527 days. So if I go to 2020 and I count from July 18, Fifteen hundred and twenty-seven days, so just the same number of days. That brings me to se September twenty-second, twenty twenty-four. I'm not saying that that's the date you have to go to, but that's the date that it would come to. So, I mean, if we were going to do a direct correlation of days, we would say, well, September twenty-second, twenty uh, twenty-four is the date that lines up with that. Like if we're taking the same period of time, does that make sense? Okay. So, so if we're going to count that, and you you don't have on there the actual dates of of um, like on our calendar, 
but you know, we have the 10th day of the seventh month and we have the 10th, the seventh year, the first day of the 10th month. And so if we're going to go from July 18th, then we would count the same number of days, 1,527 days. And that'd bring us to September 22nd, 2024. But whether that's significant or not, I don't know. So I'm not sure where I got that other number from. Um, maybe it's 1465, 1456. Now that doesn't make sense either. Um, yeah, that would make sense. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> so now, so but we're looking at this and we're saying that there is some significance here. We just don't know what it is yet. I don't know if I would put August 15th, 2024 there unless I had a good reason. And um, now, September 22nd, 2024, um, you know, it's the 18th day of the sixth month um, on, on uh, the biblical calendar. So whether that, you know, has some kind of symbol in it, I don't know. But... I don't know. I just, I, I don't know because we see a covenant there. Now, the way that we had lined this up too is we had taken the first day of the 10th month and we saw that that begins that period of divorcement in Ezra chapter 10. Right. Right. So, and the, and the other thing about Ezra, that story um, of Ezra traveling from Babylon to Jerusalem and and that whole structure of going from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month in 457 to 456, um, that is chapter seven to 10. So, um, so the fact that this is the seventh year, the 10th month, and we got this 10th day of the seventh month, that chapter seven to 10 in Ezra is significant as that same type of symbol. So it ties us to um, that history. Now, um, I'm just trying to do some other things here with this calendar converter. So, uh, that's it. That uh, Dwight mentioned the 15th of August, 2024. Yeah. I had some thoughts. I had some thoughts concerning it uh, in the study with Ezekiel. Okay. Because he, he's predicting the siege of Jerusalem. Um, but on the uh, in chapter twenty, he has um, the sort of destruction of Jerusalem in mind, and he begins that prophecy on the tenth day of the fifth month in chapter twenty. Okay. And, and right, and August fifteenth, twenty twenty four, is the tenth day of the fifth month. Yes. So in chapter twenty, that was four years before the destruction of the temple. Okay. So we have that to August fifteenth, twenty twenty four. Then would it be that four year period? Okay. So, so it's a period sense, before, but still, it it it's um, it's tying some things together. So that's useful. Right. And also the fact that it is the 10th day of the fifth month in 2024. So it's not just August 15th. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, another another thought is that Ellen White had the vision of Nashville in, in 1904. And that was on the 1st of July, um, which we could maybe take as symbolism. Uh, the first day of the seventh month, you know, wow. and uh, and like the Feast of Trumpets, um, sort of like symbolizing in some way. And yeah. it was on the six, on the Friday as well. I think it was on Friday, and that was kind of like <laughs> preparation day before the actual day of the Lord. Yeah. So, um, and that was the hunt. So that's the period of 120 years. Then would take you to 2024. And you had uh, maybe you had you could maybe bring in the, the the building of the ark, the 120 years there, 
with Noah. Right. And, and, and I feel... right. So, and I said it was 120 years, but it's 180 years, right? From um, uh, August 15th, 1844 to August 15th, 2024, right? Yeah, so you have 180 years there. And then, and then we have 120, years. and then we have 490. Okay, so that makes more sense. So there we got a few things that can can tie it in. Now, um, now as far as then the Jesuits, beginning on August 15th, 2024, um, and the 490 years to 2024, um, so this is going to just tell us that we have this period of four years. Now, now you, you have it in reverse. Well, in a sense, I mean, you could say, well, July 18th is, is like a mirror, right? Right. Okay. So, you know, we'd go back on a mirror. Now, um, so... The overall thought with all of this is mm -hmm. so many symbols that are lining up. Right. So we got more symbols now, and that, those those help us a little bit. But what it, exactly it means? Because I'm not sure what the Jesuits, other than you know we have the symbol of August 15th and we have the 490, but what they would have to do with this line. Well, okay. We have to have a reason. We'd have to have something that tells us. Well, here is why it's the Jesuits. Here is what it means. We don't have that yet. I'm not saying we're going to, but I'm just saying that we, we have to look at that a bit more. All right. Esther entered into a, a league with a Hajuerus when she chose to accept to be married to him, right? Mm-hmm. Now, our problem, our situation, if we're looking at this as a mirror, which I agree with, mm -hmm. is we are not to enter into a league, as we've been shown in multiple studies. We are not right. in, in yeah. a league with others, yet the church has entered into a league with the Jesuits. Right. Yeah. But this isn't about the church. Right. So so we didn't have to apply to us. So so obviously we have the 158. It's on the charts. That's what August 15th can be. Right. The 15th day of the eighth month can be 158. So that gives the league. Um, now, I mean, we could just have. We could even completely ignore the Jesuits. I'm just saying that we could. And we would still have the 10th day of the fifth month. We'd still have August 15th, 2024. We'd still have the 180 years and the 120 years. And we'd still have the symbol of the league without the Jesuits. Right? Okay. You, you don't need the Jesuits to, to see these symbols. Because even if we'd never mentioned them, we could have looked at that date in 2024 and seeing all of this structure. So so we bring the Jesuits into that structure, the 490 years, and and the question is, what what is that adding to what? What we're looking at? What is what is it about the Jesuits? I mean, we're not saying that this movement's gonna go into a league with the Jesuits. No. Or a league with Rome, right? So So what would the Jesuits do with this line in the sense, I mean, maybe they're a symbol that would relate to, because, um, but you know, this is about Esther becoming queen. Now we know at that time that there is uh, this plot, which which is a type of league, right? Okay. It's, see, it's, it's kind of like a league and, you know, people get together, they're going to get rid of Xerxes. And um, we know that uh, uh, at least it, there's a hint there in the Apocrypha that Haman had something to do with that plot. And, and one of the reasons he 
just like Mordecai is Mordecai had uncovered the plot by overhearing these other co-conspirators. And so Haman had to uh, then work in some other way to get promoted within the kingdom. But he, he did get promoted. So so he's on he's on a course to at some time maybe in the future uh, become king of Persia, at least in his mind. Um, that's that's kind of his goal. So he's he's working behind the scenes, but he gets caught up in um, trying to take down Mordecai in the process, which actually causes his own demise. Right. So so maybe maybe the Jesuits could be a symbol of the sort of intrigue, uh, deceit, and planning and methodology of Haman. That could work. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so so that's what we get from from by comparing these two histories. That seventh year, tenth month, that four year period. We can bring it into our history and then we can say it has 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 something to do with twenty twenty four. Now um So, so fifteen, all right, fifteen twenty six. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember these numbers, which I forget. Um, Okay, so, um, okay, that's what I wanted. I knew there was something. Okay, so there's something else here that, that I'm not certain about yet. Uh, so one of the things is if I count uh, the 1,461 days, right, and the 1,527. So 1,461, that would be from July 18, 2020 to July 18, 2024. And then we have 28 days to August 15th. But if we keep going to that September 22nd date, we have 66 days, um, that is 1527. Um, if you subtract 66, then you get 1461, right? Now that 66 days shows up in the structure of the decrees, and that's why it's important. So I'm going to bring you here. Um, see if I can find this quickly. Yeah. Okay. So. So in this story of. Uh, so this is the later part of the story. So this isn't the part from um, chapter one. This is chapter three. Now in chapter three, there's going to be these casting of lots. There's going to be this decree that's given on the 13th day of the first month. Three days later, Esther is going to go before Xerxes. And um, there's going to be a banquet, number one, on the 16th. And then there's going to be uh, the second banquet in which Haman is hanged on the 17th uh, day of the, of the first month. And then there's 66 days to Esther's decree. So, so that 66 days might mean something here in the context of what we just saw. So, so if we compare the 1527 days to four years, it's four years and 66 days. Here we have um, uh, in 477 BC or 4, 474 BC, we have these 66 days. Now, um, now how long is it from, I know I'm, we're jumping around here. We'll try to pull this all together. So, in this story of 
of Esther, we have uh, the first day of the 10th month, and then that's going to be in 479. And so I just want to put these dates here in the program. So if I go to 474, and so let's just see the number of days. Okay. Okay, so that number of days um, is, so from the day that, um, if we're saying the first day of the 10th month is when Esther gets married, to when Haman issues his decree is 1,902 days, right? So that's a period of um, nearly five years. Let me see here. That's more than five years. So is not is that nineteen hundred and two inclusive days? No, it's just a cardinal count. Okay. Yeah, so that would be five times three eighty point four. So it's uh So it's five years. So it's five years and 76 days. Um, between uh, those two. So I just wondered if it was going to give us anything. Um, You know, if we go to the first day of the first month, if we just went, because that's when they're going to start casting lots. That's going to be 1,890 days, which is 63 prophetic months, which is, which is interesting. So I'm not sure what we do with that. Um, but I'm just saying we have that 66 days there. It might be significant. It might not. Uh, and then we have five years. Five years and uh, 75 days if we take off. Um, well, it's kind of interesting. It's five years and 63 days, but it's also 63 prophetic months. It gives us a 63 in there. I'm not sure what that means. Is that right? 63? Yeah. I think. <clears throat> okay. So, so we have from Xerxes' feast, right? If you look at this bottom chart, you're going to have to Esther being crowned. That's going to be four years. And um, whatever it was, was that 38 days or 28 days? Or anyway, it's 1,527 days. So that's, and then we're going to have this period of five years to to this uh, decree. So in 474, between here, you can see how it doesn't. Let's one. Two, it doesn't look right. Um, oh, that's why I made a mistake. So that doesn't make sense. There we go. I got the wrong date. I got the wrong year. So it is four years. I thought it was four years. Okay, there we go. And that's going to be to... Sorry about that. It's doing the wrong date. So when they issue the decree, is going to be... Okay, that's better. Ah, okay. So that that's much better because that didn't make any sense to me. So it's going to be um, fifteen hundred and seventy-seven days, not nineteen o two. 
1,577 days uh, to the issuing of the decree. If you, it'd be 1,565 days. That's where I had the 1,565. I knew I had it there somewhere to the first day of the first month. So if we go um, here, I'm going to show you what I'm doing here so that you can see this. Um, get rid of the things that don't make sense. Okay, so on the calendar converter, what I've done is I put these dates in here. We're probably going to have to draw them on a line. And, okay, so these dates, you can see um, I have 483, that's the 10th, uh, that's October 17th, 43. I can use the biblical dates here, right, so that you'll see that's the 10th day of the seventh month and the first day of the 10th month. And then you can see uh, uh, the first day of the first month. Now that's going to be in 474. So that's going to be when they issued a decree. It's 1,565 days. So, so you have four years um, here, right? So you can see the four years here is 1,527. And then you have another four years, but it's going to be longer, right? So that's going to be... Um, 38 days longer, right? Is that, is that, where's this number? Come on down, okay. So 16, 15, uh, 1565 minus 1527. So the difference is 38 days between those two periods of four years. Okay, so we're tying the 10th day of the seventh month to the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month. So what does that remind us of as symbols? You can see the, the three dates there at the beginning. Now they're in different years, they're not in the same year, right? There's four years apart. But is, aren't those the dates that we have, we, we've marked those dates in the story of Ezra, that is, the 10th day of the seventh month is the center of that chiasm. And then you're going to have the first day of the 10th month, which here is going to be a marriage, not the beginning of divorce. Um, but it's going to be followed by the first day of the first month. Right? The period of divorcement in the story of Ezra. But here it's just going to be four years and um, 38 days. Well, no, four years and... And, and more than 38. It's, it's going to be 38 days more than the other period of four years. So it's going to be it's going to be four years and 104 days. And then And the other one's going to be four years and 66 days, right? Okay. <clears throat> so is this telling us anything, all this work? Well, as you're pointing out, I mean, if we're comparing this with the, the situation in Ezra, mm -hmm. is this not giving us a, a better foundation that everything is lining up in a history that we need to, to address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so it's tying us to a history that we already have tied to our history. Um, and we've had lots of first days of the 10th month, right? I mean, we have um, tied as symbols. Correct.
is didn't we have that yesterday with what we were talking about in Genesis and then what we were talking about in Ezekiel? Right. So, so we have all these symbols of the first day of the 10th month, and we have them in our history because January 11th, 2023 symbolizes the first day of the 10th month, December 25th, um, 2022 also symbolizes the first day of the 10th month. Well, it is the first day of the 10th month. So, so we have this first day of the 10th month showing up as a symbol. Now, we have other symbols, you know, the 10th day of the 7th month, first day of the 10th month, first day of the 1st month. And in our history, you can see here we have, um, it's because we have the biblical dates here. But if I just get rid of, if I go here to uh, just Julian and Gregorian, you're going to see that's August 15th, 2024. So that's the 10th day of the 5th month. This one here is obviously the 26th day of the fourth month. Uh, and this one here uh, is the 11th day of the fourth month. And then we have uh, I have the 10th day of the seventh month there. Yeah, I have the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030 on this list. I put it in there. Okay. Um, so we got the September 22nd date. We have the July 18 date. We have the August 15th date. All those dates, which could be, I mean, the thing is, we don't know what this four years is pointing to. But we do have August 15th marked as these various anniversaries of 490. 180, 120, plus it's the 10th day of the fifth month. And so it's possible that that's the date that we're supposed to look at in connection with these lines. Okay, so um, so we're going to have to draw that out. But I don't know if I want to do that right now yet. I think I want to get back to the scriptures that we're looking at. So in some ways, that's kind of a review, but it's something that we're examining and trying to see how that, um, I mean, we put these dates in front of us or we find them as part of these structures. We still don't know what they mean because even after they pass, often nothing happens, but it's not about predicting some event. We're looking at uh, these as symbols. So the fact that we can find this symbol in 2024 of August 15th, that the 10th day of the fifth month with these other anniversary dates, does it mean that it's some event that we should be looking for? But it does mean that we can understand it as a symbol of where we're moving in our lines. It doesn't mean that on that date, you know, something has to happen for it to be significant. It just exists as a symbol. Now, this was one of the things that uh, um, FFA did not like. They didn't believe that we could have symbolic dates, that we couldn't have put dates in the future. And, and I, was, I was rather disappointed that they didn't understand this um, because they just said, you put a date in the future, it's time setting. Uh, but that, that to me just seemed uh, so bizarre uh, that you would even try to make that claim. Because um, time setting is quite clear. And then um, uh, uh, Del Rosa, what's uh, Heather? She right. wrote a paper showing, you know, the de that it's time setting. And, and it was easily to sh easy to show that, that her paper was wrong, right? Now, maybe showing people things that are wrong that sometimes isn't uh, always persuasive. But the arguments she was making weren't, weren't uh, valid arguments because the fact that we can have a date that's symbolic in the future uh, can guide us in decisions that we're making because they're parts of these structures. And sometimes these dates, after the fact, will 
gain a greater significance because of the events that happen on those dates. But they're not something we predict. It's definitely not time setting. To measure the time, to me, that would be part of watching and waiting. So when Ellen White says that we can't set a date, you know, that we can't know any of these dates in the future, she's not saying dates have no significance after October 22, 1844, that they have no symbolic uh, 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 um, meaning, right? That uh, She's not saying that. But she talks about watching and waiting. And so watching and waiting must include measuring the time, being aware of whatever symbols are occurring around us to know where we are. Because if, if, we, if we have nothing to go by, I mean, what is watching and waiting looking for? Well, we can look at the events around us and say we're watching and waiting. But those events are rather confusing. How do we know, for instance, when the pandemic happened, how do we know what that pandemic means? Well, we have a structure in a repeat of Millerite history that we can place that pandemic and we can say, here is what it means. Here is what that pandemic was. It was predicted by Jeff, not, not you know, the exact date it was going to happen. But after the fact, we could look at it and say, well, it happened between these two waymarks, November 9th and July 18. So, so we have to accept that, you know, Jeff predicted the pandemic in some manner. Um, I wouldn't say it's a promise of special significance, but it's, it's, it's part of watching and waiting, right? Because we were looking at the events that are coming and we found that time was attached to these dates. So when we're looking at these, these dates in the past, and we put a date like August 15th, 2024, we're not making a prediction about that date. Okay. So, so we'll come back to that, though. We're going to come back to this whole structure. So, so Esther chapter 1 addresses that beginning part of that four years. So chapter 2 is four years later, right? It's going to be, um, well, it's going to start three years later. But it's going to end with uh, the marriage four years later, 1,527 days later. Right? And now attached with that, we examined this plot. Right? So we know that there's this plot that's happening at that time. And, and then uh, a plot is like a league. And so we can look then four years later and we're going to have uh, Mordecai uh, convince Xerxes to issue this decree to kill the Jews. So that's going to be, uh, he's going to begin that 1,565 days after this wedding. And... He's going to begin on the first day of the first month. Right? Agreed. Okay. So in the first month, that is in the month Nisan, in the 12th year of King Artaxerxes, they cast Pur, that is the lot, before Haman from day to day and from month to month to the 12th month, that is the month Adar. Now, we're saying that he begins on the first day of the first month. It just says in the first month, that is the month Nisan, in the 12th year. He's going to cast these lots, right? He's going to do this day to day. Now, so there was a big discussion in uh, School of the Prophets back in 2015 or 16, either the end, I think it was actually in 2016, um, on how to, how to do this. Um, how, how did this happen? Was Were they, you know, first, you know, did they take a whole year and count the whole year to figure out? They just, they did it in that year, and it's in the 12th year, and then they're going to cast these lots, and then by the 13th day of the first month, um, they're going to come to the 
the auspicious date. So it's it's going to be here. Uh, let me see. Um, so they're going to count the lots. I'm just trying to see where they have this. Um, where's the other date? Where does it mention? Okay. Uh, so then were the scribes called on the 13th day of the first month, right? So that's 13 verse 12. And or three verse 12, pardon me. Um, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants and the governors. Right. So he's going to issue this decree. So it's going to be on the 13th day of the first month that they issued a decree. So so why is it on the 13th day of the first month? What, how do we understand this story of this casting of lots and why it's on the 13th day of the first month that they have this decree issued? Well, I would seem to have some connection to the preparation for the Passover. To, okay. So you're saying it has some connections to the preparations for the Passover. Okay. Um, you mean that they choose that day because of the Passover? Not really, no. I was just thinking. That, that was, it was aligned with that day. So I was just thinking... There could be some connection to it in some way. Yeah. So, so when you get to the evening on the 13th, you would normally uh, slay the Passover lamb, right? And then on the 14th that night, you'd eat it, right? And then, um, so that's, that's, that's the story of the Passover. That's how we understand it. Now, um, so it's going to be on the 13th day of the first month. Now it's in the twelfth year of Artaxerxes, <clears throat> and it, and it's going to then issue this decree that's going to be fulfilled on the thirteenth day of the twelfth month in the twelfth year of Artaxerxes, right? So, so the first month they cast lots and they find well the best time for this event to occur is going to be the thirteenth day of the twelfth month. So. Now, how did they cast these lots? Because it just says in the first month. Now, as far as um, the Hebrew is concerned, it's it, it wouldn't be something that you could define uh, as that it means within. Uh, so if you look at uh, really mostly it would be translated at the beginning. I believe here I'm just going to look at the Hebrew just to make sure. Um, yeah, so this, uh, I don't know if you can see that here. It's Esther 3, verse 7, and you're going to see this word kodesh, which just means month, but it has this funny letter at the beginning. So kodesh is a three-letter word, and then you put this bet in front. That's the letter B. And uh, that makes it in the month. And then it says Harashon. That just means the first. Rosh means head, right? So it's just another way to say the beginning. So in the month, um, the beginning month, right? Um, so, so it doesn't, it doesn't, and the word uh, ba, the ba at the beginning, the bet, it doesn't doesn't mean within, right? I mean, it can mean, but it doesn't it doesn't have to mean. So I'm saying that it's on the first day of the first month that they're going to do this, and um, and and then one of the things is uh, they cast the lot before Haman day by day, 
Now, so that could be just that they're going to cast a lot and they're going to take each day and throw these dice and figure out which one's going to be the lucky day. Now, probably what they would do is find which is the best day and which is the best month. Now, exactly how they did that, we don't know. Right, so there's lots of uh, uh, speculation on how this would happen. The Bible doesn't really tell us. Now, this one commentary says, um, so I'm just going to read just to give you an example. Um, um, some have questioned whether Purr may not have signified also some game of chance, which they played before or with Haman, from day to day to divert him from his melancholy till the lucky time came in which he was to have the gratification of slaying all the people who were objects of his enmity, which makes no sense, right? So they're just taking that day to day. So it's like, oh, they're just playing this game. Um, but that doesn't make any sense. So in the 12th year of the king, Ahasuerus is casting lots for the purpose of determining the date, right? Now, okay, go on. I said go, all right. Okay. Now, there is this, um, uh, remember when we looked at uh, the Apocrypha, Apocrypha, they had the 14th instead of the 13th. Um, why? Now it says in the apocrypha. So let's let's uh, go there. Um, so I don't know where this is, but they're going to talk about that there. So um, I'm not sure. They say the Greek, maybe it's just the Greek. I'm just looking at all these chapters to see where we would find this, but um, these are the decrees and it's going to mention that. Okay, so this is in this last part. Um, Therefore hath he made two lots, one for the people of God and another for all the Gentiles. And these two lots came at the hour and day and time and day of judgment before God among all nations. Um, therefore those days shall be unto them in the month of Adar, the 14th and 15th. Not sure what that means particularly. Um, so that means lots were cast, um, if, if we take what this says, uh, to determine the date that they would, I'm not sure if this is just more figurative in this case, but I'm not sure what they're talking about as far as, um, let's go back. Okay. What you're. What you're looking at here, yeah. if we follow what the translators of the Bible had done, you would be okay. looking, wouldn't, so, wouldn't we be looking more about Esther chapter 8? Okay, in Esther chapter 8. And verse uh, 12. Verse which? Verse 12. Okay, upon one day, all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, namely on the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month Adar. Okay. Two, 
So that that's that's just part of the King James. Correct. So So what what are you trying to say? I'm not following. Well, you were looking you were looking to find where this uh, 13th day had been noted. No, that's not what what I was looking for. I'm looking for why he says in this commentary that the Greek um, in addressing this um, this verse here, three verse seven, they're going to say, um, okay. They cast per, that is a lot. This appears to be the Hebrew corruption of the pure Persian word pari, which signifies anything that happens fortuitously. I mean, this is just a commentator's opinion, right? But anyway, there is an addition here in the Greek text that was probably in the original and which makes this place very plain. I shall set down the whole verse and give the Greek in a parenthesis that it may be read consecutively with that of the Hebrew. In the first month, that is in the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast Pur, that is the lot, before Haman from day to day and from month to month. And then they show here what's added in the Greek, that they might destroy in one day the people of Mordecai, and the lot fell on the fourteenth day of the month Adar. So it says, we plainly see intimated by the Hebrew text that they cast lots or used a species of divination to find which of the 12 months would be most favorable for the execution of Haman's design. And having found the desired month, they, they, then they cast lots or use divination to find out which day of the said month would be the lucky day for the accomplishment of the enterprise. But the Hebrew text does not tell us the result of this divination. It's going to tell us later, right? I think that's what you thought I was asking. But it's going to tell you in 8 verse 12. We are left to guess guess it out, but the Greek supplies this deficiency and makes it all clear. From it, we find that when they cast for the month, the month Adar take was taken, and when they cast for the day, the 14th, that is the Hebrew says the 13th of that month was taken. Now, you know, so there's a number of things. One is the Apocrypha gives the 14th rather than the 13th. And what what could that mean? Uh, I mean, why would they make it? It's, it's not like it's easy to get confused between 14 and 13. So just from a symbolic point of view, does that mean anything that we have these two different dates? And, and maybe there's some practical reason why the Greeks give a different date. So from when they issue the decree, remember there's going to be um, um, number of days between that and when the decree goes into effect. Now, uh, the biblical date and uh, let me see, that's what I want to figure out here. So in the 12th month, the Jews are both and the Babylonians are both going to observe uh, the new moon. And I'm just trying to figure this out. Just hang on a second. Um, so 473. So, so there is going to be a leap year that year. And... Um,
I know I'm taking a bit of time here, but this makes sense. Oh, that's why. Okay, so So when we look at this 12th month, um, is it possible that there's just a different determination of the month? That the reason why the Jews wrote the 13th, because on their calendar it would be the 13th, but on the Babylonian it was the 14th. Um, so an era allowed to contrast, so this is Angela's comment, an era allowed to contrast, I have no idea what MOB is, What's MOB? Mark, mark of the beast. Okay. Uh, the mark of the beast class with those accepting the three angels. Message Revelation 13, 14 regarding the 13 and 14 dates. Well, that's kind of interesting. I mean, maybe there's a symbol there, just 13 and 14. Um. The calendars line up, the biblical and Babylonian calendars line up in uh, 473 BC. So there isn't a difference in those calendar dates. So that can't be the reason that, that we know of. Um, so it's not something obvious like that. <clears throat> Now, it is interesting, this is in Esther 3, verse 7. So we know March 7th is the first Sunday law in 321. Um, but, you know, I, there's just some reason the Greek says the 14th day rather than the 13th day. And, and I, I don't think those are easy numbers to just confuse. They're not, they're not close to each other. Um, you know, and how they're spelt. So it's not like, you know, they just recognize some little tick wrong or something. Uh, but for some reason, the 14th is written in the Greek text. Um, so the question is, did they start on the first day of the first month to do this and then determine this over a period of 12 days, and then on the 13th day, um, present this to Xerxes, and then Xerxes issues this decree? Or did they do it all on that day, or the day before? Do we have any idea of how this happened? Is it important? Um, Ellen White doesn't mention anything about it that I can find. You know, that's going to give us any more information. <clears throat> Now, what about the connection between the casting of lots here and the casting of lots uh, for Christ's um, garment? Would this not be a parallel? 
Okay, so one of the things that we have here is we have this period of time when the decree is issued and then Esther goes in between the king. That is the period from the slaying of the Passover lamb to the wave offering, right? Right. Okay, so we have that, that period of time, that three days. So, so that period is connected to the crucifixion of Christ. Now, the casting of lots is going to happen here before, um, you know, before the decree is issued. We don't know how long they, whether they start on the first day of the first month. I've always assumed they did, that they have some kind of, of ritual to determine this. And that when they get to the 13th, they then determine that this is the auspicious day. We figured out it's going to be the 12th month. Um, and so they just, they picked the 13th day and they issued the decree on that day. So this 13th becomes this day to issue the decree and the 13th becomes the day that the decree goes into effect, uh, 11 months later. Right. So. So we know that the lots are cast for Christ's garment. And, and we say that there's some connection here. The connection that we can see is that this is referencing that Passover period in which the lamb is slain. Now, what does casting the lots for the garment, does that have any parallel to them casting the lots when to destroy the Jews? Because they're going to destroy, destroy Christ, crucify Christ, they're casting lots. So, so we should be able to see that there is a parallel there. Right. Well, Christ is going to come in and take the place. Right. He's going to interpose by, by offering himself as an offering. And there's going to be lots cast. Okay. So we can say that that, that is some connection. Um, okay, so then Haman, so we remember that Haman has this number attached to him. The Hebrew number for his name is 2001, as we've mentioned. And so we've got Haman there, 2001. We're saying that that's 9-11 connected to that. And um, this decree that he has, so it's going to be based upon these, these people have this, uh, this laws. Um, they're a diverse people. They're diverse among the people. Their laws are diverse. Or the, pardon me, they're dispersed among the people. Their laws are diverse from all, from all people. Now, of course, the laws of the Medes and the Persians are sacred, right? That's the constitution, the symbol there. Um, neither keep they the king's laws. So they're, they're opposed to the constitution. So the king should just get rid of them. So we, I mean, we can see clearly how this is connected to the Sunday law, right? That Ellen White makes the parallel here. But we say, that, that we have to take this history as, because it's not the Sunday law itself in the sense that we know it's going to be later that this decree goes into effect. So this is just the issuing of the decree in chapter 3, right? And we parallel this with Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3 is the Sunday law. But in Esther chapter 3, we have... In a sense, a Sunday law, but yet it's it's not gone into effect. It's going to be delayed for 11 months. Okay. So the king is going to issue this decree while he's going to 
use his ring to, to issue this decree that Haman really has written. Right? So he just lets Haman issue the decree. And, you know, the, the money is going to be given uh, to do this. But also we know that um, Haman is spending money, which, right, so he's spending money. This money then is going to go into the king's treasury, and then that money is going to be given um, So, so okay, the king said unto him, this is 3.11, uh, the silver is given to thee. So this is the king speaking, speaking, speaking to Haman, given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Then were the king's scribe called on the 13th day of the first month. And there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants. And to the governors that were over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province, according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language, in the name of King Ahasuerus, it was written and sealed with the king's reign. So then they're going to send these letters out by post. Um, and they're going to uh, cause to perish and kill, cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month Adar, to take the spoil of them for a prey. And the copy of the writing for a commandment uh, to be given in every province was published unto all people that they should be ready against that day. Right, so the posts go out. So this is what happens. So this is the issuing of the decree. So this is chapter three, right? It's, it's going to... Um, You know, see that Mordecai is not going to bow. So then, and, and we can see, of course, the parallel with chapter three of Daniel, right? Bowing down to the image. Here it's bowing down to Haman. And instead of a fiery furnace, it's going to be a decree that's issued. Any more thoughts on this? So what we need to be able to do, so tomorrow we're gonna to start drawing these more on a line, sort of like what Dwight had done, but just a little more detail. Um, and we wanna see how we line this up with our history. Because normally what we would do is we would say, well, this is the Sunday law, it's Daniel chapter 3, it's the Sunday law, so it's the Sunday law. But in our history, we have a way mark that we mark as the Sunday law, which is December 25th, 2021, right? It's not a Sunday law, nothing happens there. But as a symbol, it's tied to this idea of the Sunday law. It's also tied to this divorcement, which is going to be from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month, because... December 25th, 21 is the 20th day of the ninth month. So we have that symbol. And so we're going to have to draw this out. And, you know, we need to consider some of these, these things of how we're going to understand it. But uh, the way that I've been doing it, whether it's right or wrong, is I'm saying that this refers to this history from November 9th to December 25th, 2021. That is, it's the history of this movement at that time. And in that history, um, we have Trump. So Trump is Xerxes. And there's going to be a deceit that goes on. So Trump is going to be deceived. And we're saying, well, that relates to this. But there's still lots of things that we have to sort out about this story. And then we know that when we go to Chapter 4, we now have the response. And, and what we're not doing is we're not saying, well, this chapter three, all the way through, this is just all the Sunday law. And so this is the story of the Sunday law. And we're gonna, we, this is still Trump, 
right? We're going to look at it if it is Trump, right? We're going to look at every possibility. But we've taken the, the position that this is, is something else. That is, we have to take this story and place it somewhere in our line, but we wouldn't just continue it on. And, and so how do we do that? Um, you know, so we, so we need to understand this line in some way, because what we did is we said that this is going to represent the, the three angels' messages again, that, that we're going to have this repeat of history. And so we're not really sure how to do that. But we're going to at least uh, tomorrow we'll start drawing the first three chapters on the line, um, try to get that, you know, Sorted, maybe we'll see some some details there that we didn't see looking at it how we did. But we'll at least get that done tomorrow. And then we're going to have to, after we get that done, then we're going to have to continue proceeding through the rest of the chapters of Esther. So what's before us, basically, in sorting through Esther is, again, we're looking at Xerxes as Trump. And we're trying to understand the symbols in these stories. So you know, Angela has a comment, you know, suggesting some things about this. Um, you know, it's kind of in a question. Yeah, I don't understand her uh, shorthand at all. So. I don't, don't, don't know what any of that means. Um, but anyway, we, we will look at this. So how we understand uh, these characters in this story of chapter 3 and then chapter 4 onward. So it's going to take a bit of time. Okay. Um, let's close in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful for the time that we had to study here this morning. And we just ask for your Holy Spirit uh, to continue to work in our lives throughout this day. Bring us together again according to thy will uh, to open your word tomorrow morning. And um, continue to teach us, we ask. Watch over each one. May your angels protect us. And uh, may we always be aware of your presence and the needs around us. And we pray this in Jesus' name.